I'm right here. Now, uh, hi, Coach. Hey, Coach, how you doing? How are, where are you from? I am in Western New York. I'm just between Buffalo and Niagara Falls. Awesome, awesome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What site were you on that you got the invite from? Uh, I saw it pop up in a couple different Facebook groups. Oh, okay. All right. So you're in a bunch of them, right? Yeah. Every time I see one that pops up, I sign up for it. Never hurts, right? No, not at all. Good. It's always, it's always something you can learn from somebody. What What level do you coach? I am at the varsity level. Um, I coach running backs and inside linebackers. And then this year I took over our special teams as well. Good. Do you, um, do you guys run RPOs? Yeah, our offensive coordinator started dabbling in it. He's he's really um becoming an air raid guy slowly but surely. So we um this year we we wanted to put more in, but our quarterback ended up being uh like a third wide receiver mm -hmm. because he was the best guy we had to throw the football. We've got a sophomore, mm -hmm. a guy turning sophomore who'll be coming up this year, this summer, right. and he's a whole lot better at these RPO things. So we're we're definitely gonna try to in incorporate that a lot. Coach, RPOs scare a lot of people because a lot of people don't, um, you know, don't understand there's a billion different kind of RPOs, you know. Sure, yeah. Today, today we're going to talk about the base pre-snap one where we're going to run our quick screens to the outside. We're going to run an ISO route to the other side and we're going to run the ball up the middle. Okay. Okay. That's and then close to what we do anyway, actually. And then on Monday, I'm going to talk about pre-snap pre where we're going to now run our quick game vertical pass game to the outside with the two receivers and then to the other side in iso and we're going to run the football and then on uh i forget what day but then i'm going to run jack side reads where that's the real unique rpos that i like to do we steal a lot of yardage go for big plays we read the backside inside linebacker it's a post snap read Awesome. Um, and we, ha we have a lot of fun with it. And then there's a lot of things you could do with your screen game and still read the backside inside linebacker and run pops too. So um, we have fun with it. Yeah. The, me putting this in um, years and years and years ago just kind of made our package and our offense more explosive. It did. Very cool. Looking forward to this. Thank you. Yeah. Will, where are you from? I'm in currently in Utah. Oh, nice to meet you. Uh, yeah, same here, what, coach. what time is it? What time's it now, Lee? Let me guess. 553. 453. 453. Yeah. See, see, yeah, okay, cool. 
my uh, I got two buddies of mine. He um, he coached with me, and then he went all over the place. He, he was the IMG head coach, and now he's at Del Val, Bobby Acosta. He took my um, my um, running my quarterback from years ago. He coached him at Bucknell, and then he kind of took him under his wings and took him all over the place. So they were at um, yeah, Scholastic. St. Scholastica, St. Scholastica in, um, where was it? Mid, not Michigan. Shoot. Out West. Um, shit. Where was it? Um, well, way out there. I forgot. Now, now I'm drawing a blank. So he was in there and he had a different time zone. And then he comes back to Florida and now they're back in Texas so every time they call me or if I call them, we're not in the same mindset because it might be too early here or too late here. or uh, it's, it's so confusing. I wish we all had the same clocks. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's bothering me. St. Scholastica, where is that? I'm going to look that up. I have to look that up now. God, I'm drawing a blank. Shoot. St. Scholastica. Shoot. St. Scholastica College. Uh, shoot. Minnesota. Yeah. It was out in Minnesota. It's very cold out there. Yeah. I can't believe I'm drawing a blank. That's not good. Do you, Will, do you guys run RPOs? Um. I know me personally, I do when I was uh, once a head coach back in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And uh, we moved out here like five years ago. And um, now I'm an assistant coach here. I just got back into high school coaching. And um, the, the coach, I'm trying to convince him to, you know, implement the RPO with some kind of quick game or vertical game and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Because I think he's the, our OC is not up to date with it, I guess. Coach, I was just telling uh, Chris um, that um, I'm going to be talking about pre-snap, quick game with the run game. So let me just show you. I'm going to share the screen so we can see what I'm doing. This 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 is the real first. Um, RPO stuff that we put in. Here, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Wait. All right, hold on. Um, oh, where is it? Hmm. All right, here it is. All right. You guys can you guys see that? Yeah, we could. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you could just again, if you're a quarterback or if you're standing behind a quarterback, we have three areas that we are going to attack, and everybody thinks they're getting a football. And that, that's our pink, uh, our pink. And I'll explain to you why I call it pink because it's for the quarterback, nobody else. And we're going to have a run game inside and we're going to have the outsides trying to cover grass that is, that is not being covered. So in other words, we're going to throw the ball out here. We're going to throw the ball here or we're going to run the ball in this box. So it's like a triple option for us. And yes. pre-snap. So pre-snap means the quarterback is not reading anybody. He's not going to read the quarterback. He's not going to ride, read and ride. He's not doing any of that stuff. In his head, he knows when the ball snapped, I'm handing it off. Or he knows when the ball is snapped, I'm kicking back and I'm throwing it. But with, with the illusion that we're going to be reading. That's that. So defenses don't know what we're doing. Parents or fans out there think that our receivers don't know the plays because they're running routes when we're running the football. It's great. I love it. Um, I don't like to force feed our receivers to block because nine out of 10 of them don't block. 
So we want to, and it does. And to me, I'm going to be honest, if you're running a ball inside and you have a defender like here, why you want him to run inside here to get your hips in here and block him right here? He never makes the block anyway. All you're doing is drawing back inside here. I, I, these blocks to me, I mean, they're not important. I mean, that's why when we run our routes, it's a block because he's running out with them. You're going to see the corners running with them on a fade or um, or we're trying to defeat the stalk over here. So we did our block. We're occupying, and that's what we're doing. I love the fact when we're running the football and you see these guys expanding, you know, these guys may be expanding and we're running the ball up there. And to me, that's a block. To me, that's a block. And that's that. So that's my philosophy. I used to hate when line coaches would say, and, and we're watching film and they'll be screaming out, it would have been a touchdown if the, if, uh, the X blocked uh, or if the Z sustained his block. He did it. it was always a receiver's fault why it wasn't a touchdown. I used to hate that because I was a receiver coach. So now I think this system here makes receiver coaches and line coaches friends again. Because just worry about your job and the ball will go where we teach our quarterback how to read it. And that's what we do. So, yeah, we put a line out here, a line out here, and we call it crop in the picture. And I learned that phrase from my, my girls. I used to take these pictures, guys, like um, when we're at vacation and, you know, my wife will be there with the girls. I take this. You see so many things in the background. And my girls would say, Daddy, who are you taking a picture of? Take it of us. Crop the picture. And it would just show the picture of my wife. I was like, I was trying to get the girl in the bikini in the back. That's why I made a real big picture like that. But um, they don't like that answer. But crop in the picture I keep that term for my quarterbacks and, and all my guys, actually. Um, focus on just this. And my girls kind of hit home with that, with, with the camera, and I kind of use that, that term with my quarterbacks and my, 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 my linemen. Just focus on the crop, the picture. You know, crop the picture here. Crop the picture here. Don't look at all the other shit that's going on. And that seems to help kids. Um, you know, with all the other crazy stuff going on, you know, the crowd, the fans, the, these guys going, you know, going inside and out, showing blitz, moving back. Don't worry about that shit. Just crop the picture and look at what you got to look at. That helped us. That has helped us. So. It's amazing what 10 year old girls can teach head coaches. Yeah. You know. So good. Now, when you're when you're breaking down your your tendencies, it's nuts because when you're RPOing, you're not predetermined calling a run play or a pass play, but yet on your your um, play call sheet it may say a run, it may say a pass, but to me that's not a tendency because in the schemes that we're going to talk about. And, and, to, and on, on Monday, too, we're taking what's open. So if we're taking what's open, to me, I'm not calling a tendency. We're reacting to the defense. So it could be very misleading to defensive coordinators that might be saying, hey, they like to run the bubble and throw the bubble a lot. Or they throw the, the, the hitch. Because sometimes coordinators think that we just call a play and say, throw it to the left, throw it to the right, hand the ball off. T to me, you can't be very consistent offensively with that. But some people believe that we do that, you know, or they'll say, what a great call when you threw the bubble. How'd you know it was there? Well, it, it's built in. The kids make you look good if, if you teach it right. So we drive ourselves crazy when we, we want to, in the offseason, talk about what's our tendencies and this and that. It's hard to say what our tendency. Maybe our tendency is that we call this concept more, which we do. So it drives me crazy because I am a numbers guy. I am a statistic guy, but I can't get that perfect thing on. What am I unconsciously calling um, with that? So, and, and you'll see what I'm talking about with, with, with this stuff right here. But I will say that athletes 
make you a better coach. And you'll see on here. When I have a kid on Penn State getting the football, my plays look a little better than a kid that couldn't make it in a Division three level. It just happens to be. They get us contract extensions. They, they, they tear your hair out during the week, but uh, in game day, taking a 78-yard wildcat play for a touchdown um, with that. So, good. Are you guys no huddle, too? Are you we're guys more no of a muddle huddle? We're a muddle huddle team, really. Oh, muddle huddle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. We don't always huddle. We try not to. Um, we like to get up to the line and then try to assess the situation, but we have a huddle incorporated if we need it. I, I found my kids like to bother each other in huddles. And I made a rule that nobody could be five yards from each other when they're on the field. So we just go no huddle and they're paying the asses. Um, love them, but they seem to be more focused on, and I used to hate when they used to say, oh, the quarterback said this. No, I didn't shut up. No. So all eyes are on me. And now if you're, if anybody doesn't know the play, blame me. And we go no huddle. We go many different tempos. And um, with this RPO stuff, it's simple because our receivers don't even know how to teach this. If they had, if they left my program, went somewhere else, they wouldn't know how to verbal back to the other coaches, what we're doing. I teach the quarterbacks, the certain um, the certain wrinkles of our no huddle with our colors, pink, black, um, or ugly and what it is. And I'm not very wordy. We're a buzzword and visually they'll see a little, um, a little, a little clue, a little clue of what to do with their eyes. And it seems to be, uh, it seems to be working because when you're doing an RPO offense, the number one guy gets it. The number two guy kind of gets it, but may not. The number three guy is guessing. All right. And then your wildcat guy, just, I get the ball, I run. So I did teach it to where it was very simple because they get very nervous. Like, coach, I don't know how to read the backside inside linebacker, but I know how to throw the bubble. And then the schemes get all very complicated in his, in his head. And they're just guessing, and you look like a fool because he's riding the quarterback, and then he's throwing a fade, uh, riding the running back, then he's throwing a fade. Um, so this system for us works. It works because it puts the quarterback, because you put the quarterback uh, there who's an athlete, and it makes him feel comfortable to do what you're doing. Because when I coach, I do it a couple ways. I also go behind the quarterback and practice. And what I used to do was like, hey, hey, Step back and throw. Remember, you don't have to hand it off on this play. And instead of me doing that, now when I'm here, he looks at my wristbands. I wear pink for uh, breast cancer. I wear the black ones that everybody got the black wristband. And ugly is my face. And he knows right away. So when I'm screaming something out and I'm, I'm, I'm rubbing one of the wristbands, he knows it's pink. No other guy knows what I'm doing. Um, and we go. So pink is pre-snap. Pre-snap means I know where the ball is going before the snap of the football. I'm either really going to ride it and hand it off or I'm kicking back to get away from the running back and I'm throwing the ISO route or throwing the bubble screen or the now route. It's that simple. It's that comfortable for the kids. And every kid understands that type of stuff and can do this, this stuff. And then our quick pass game where they're going vertical um, is just another thing to our screen game. Um, and, and, and most of the guys are pretty good with that too. So that's that, but I don't teach everything, everything to all the guys, but I like to have the pre-snap stuff, um, for those guys. So where, where is everybody else from Jason? Where are you from? It's pretty neat on Facebook. Everybody kind of is from all over the place. I'm from Barnaby High School um, in Ocean County, New Jersey. If you know where Long Beach Island is, it's right there. If you know where Atlantic City is, it's 30 miles north of Atlantic City. So I just stepped down after 18 years. I built this program from scratch, from the bottom up. Middle school football moved up with the kids. 
and 15 years uh, of varsity football. And the last 11 years, we've had one losing record. So we've been pretty good. And I left on a high note. We were five and three this year. I stepped down and I kind of miss it. Cool. All right, let's get into it. I know I'm, I'm filming this, uh, so people are gonna come see it later with that too. So let me see this. All right, so everybody can see the board, right? Cool. All right, so um, that's that. Like I said, I'm, I'm Rob Davis, Barnegat High School, 15 years, varsity football coach. And then three years, I built the program up from the middle school up to freshman to JV. And then we went right to Voracy with there. Prior to Barnegat, I was at Lacey Township, which uh, legendary head football coach Lou Versillo got 299 career wins. I was there for six years in the past game I did for him. Um, and he he was uh, he, he's 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 the best coach for in terms of the run game. He was uh, he's got all these every year thousand yard rushers. He coached Keith Elias that played for the Giants and and Princeton, and he's just a legendary coach here in New Jersey. And I learned a lot from him in the run game. I was a pass game guy when we were at Lacey. When I was at Lacey, we then broke like 29 passing records um, in, in terms of the pass game, still kept our, our run game intact. We never did this stuff, though. But I took uh, all his run game stuff with my pass game and put it together when I came to Barnicket. Because he always said, dude, when you go away, you do what you want to do. And that's what I did. So I did that. So. Good. Okay. So I'm going to talk the next four talks. I'm going to talk. So today I'm going to talk about pre-snap RPO quarterback reads pre-snap. So meaning the quarterback is going to know what he's doing with the football before the snap. Okay. And then the other RPOs are kind of a read, but on the pre-snap, he's going to catch the ball. He's going to turn, he's going to hand it off. It looks like we're reading somebody, but he's going to hand the ball off. If it's a pass, he's going to catch. He's going to take one step back, and then he's going to throw the football on our screen or the ISO route to the other side. And I'll explain to that a little bit more in detail. On Monday, I'm going to do pre-snap run with now quick pass game to the perimeter. So now instead of bubble screens and now screens behind the line of scrimmage, we're going to catch and we're going to throw hitches, slants, and fades and outs. And then the backside is going to be an ISO route again. And again, we're going to run the football um, in the middle of the field with that. After that, on Thursday, I'm going to be talking about post-snap reads, where we're going to now read the backside inside linebacker, and we're going to throw the football, replacing him, and we're going to run the football, or we're going to still run our quick game to the perimeters, to both sides. So it's really four options on that. That's the real neat RPO that really has helped our program when we put that in because teams don't blitz us. When they blitz us, we replace them and we get some big yardage with that. So let me get started with this. But if you come to the next four, and oh, the, the last one I'm going to do is slip screens with our pop series. And we'll do that. It's pretty fun stuff. I'm trying to tweak things. Um, to do certain, um, to be a little bit more multiple with that stuff. I didn't perfect it yet. The linemen are tough with it, but uh, I do have cutups for that. And I'm gonna show that over that week and I'm next week. All right. Okay, like I was saying before, these are our first steps are of our RPO. Now, when I teach um, our RPOs, I, this is the first thing I teach. So every quarterback needs to know this thing. This is our 101 easy port, pink. Pink means pre, pre-snap. So when the kids see me giving them the indicator of pink, they know pre-snap. Now I know what, what, now I just have to know what the play is and I can react. If they say black, that is now a post-snap read. And like I said, we'll do that before. And then ugly, is the same side stuff. Now, checkerboard stuff, just other ideas, how we do it. Again, we're no huddle and we go fast. I have, in the past, have shown 
a uh, four different pictures. So what we would do is color this pink and their eyes are only on the left corner stop. We would do a fast food, I wish I had it, some picture like McDonald's, um, Burger King. We would have a, uh, a, 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 a sport ball, maybe a football, maybe a bat. And then over here, we would have a celebrity, right? Or a pro team or whatever. But the whole thing is they're looking at this here. And if they saw pink, they know it's pre-snap. What happened to me was I just felt like I was talking too much to tell you, hey, pink, pink. They would get out a card and that's that. So what we do is we do dummy signals. So I tell my coaches, do four different um, pictures. And it don't mean shit. So I let her have fun with the stuff. And they hold that stuff up. Eyes are looking all over the place. And um, you know what? People are trying to figure out what our plays are because we have checkerboard boxes that don't mean jack crap. And I'm the one who's just giving the signal with, with my wristband. Now, I could get away with my pink wristband because it's Breast Awareness Month in uh, October. So people think I'm just being very uh, go, good with that. And I am, I am with that, but I also use that as an indicator for the eyes of the quarterback. And that's all it is. The pink, the black, and the ugly is the eyes of the quarterback. And that's it. And that's it. Doesn't mean nothing for receivers. Doesn't mean nothing for linemen. Doesn't mean, mean nothing for the running backs. Okay. So like I was telling coach before, when I, when I coach this stuff, I kind of put a line in the middle of, on the side, a line right here. And I said, these are the boxes how we're doing. We cropped the picture. So my girls tell me that I need to crop my pictures when I take pictures all the time because I take them too far away. So when you crop them, the picture looks great and it shows detail of what you're trying to show, uh, right? So when I say crop the picture, they're cropping the picture to look here, they're cropping the picture to look here, and they're cropping the picture to look here. And that's only the quarterback, okay? Now, with our pink pre-snap thing, we always have a quick screen, which is going to the outside or vice versa, the X will get the football on a now route. So we're going to either gonna get wide with a screen with a gum, or we're going to run now to the outside. And now stands for now to the O to the outside to the W receiver. And that's how we keep it, keep it real simple with that. The backside one-on-one -on -one guy, he's always going to run a hitch. If the hitch ain't open, we always know it's a fade. So it's built in. It's always built in. So when we're in pink, and we run gum or um, gum or now, we're going to run a hitch or fade, and that's that. So receivers know exactly what they're doing. So when they're practicing with coach during Indy, I go to the coach. Instead of telling him to run all these different plays, I said, we're in pink. Run your quicks. And this is what they're doing. So right, for right now, they're running their quick screens. The run game, our line linemen are going to be blocking inside zone, one back power, okay, for right now, with one back. When we go two back, we can run power, we can run split zone and do stuff like that, or we can run our ISO play too, so we can mix it in. So we want to do the pink series when we're running somewhat in the middle of the field, not on pitches, not on pin and pull, but we're running in the middle of the field. So we want to occupy everybody in every one of these sections Okay, and everybody thinks they're getting a football, and we're expecting the DBs to make sure that they are pass throwing and not worrying about the run game. And that's that. Okay, because me being a receiver coach, if you teach my pet peeve, my pet peeve is if there was a li linebacker right there, and instead of running bubble, we're just running a football, everybody's blocking, everybody's blocking, and this guy's gonna run inside, he'll go inside and they never get their ass in between the ball carrier and that. And it's always a bad block, and it's always being blamed why this guy didn't score a touchdown because we didn't make our blocks right. So I take the blocking away. We only block on our quick screens, and that's it. And that's all. We actually run routes all the time, and that's what we do. And unless we run a pitch play to your side, then we are engaged in block, blocking with that. So we want to run – our bubble screen and now screen and our ISO right here, and then run the football right here. 
Okay. Again, pink means the eyes. We tell the quarterback that you're not reading anything right now. You're either going to catch and throw or catch and hand off. Now, how does he know where to throw the football? Well, we tell him if he's going to throw the bubble screen, you throw it if it's five yards. That's what we tell him. If you can get five yards with this guy, take it. If you can't, all right, not that. And the quarterback would say, Coach, I don't think he can get five. He can get four. Then you're not going to him. So if you can't get five, cross that out. Over here, can we get five? I don't know, Coach. This guy's kind of in the way. Then don't do it. If he's way off and he's on the ball, throw it. When in doubt, run the football. And that's how we teach it. That's how we teach it. And I want to complete it. So if they're going to throw the football out here and it's contested, they're done. Now I'm going to determine where the football is going because we're going fast. All right. Because what I would do if a quarterback makes a bad read like that, I slow it down a little bit where I get up top, which way he should go. And then I'll say, throw it to the right, throw it to the left, hand the football up. But I don't like to baby the quarterbacks too much with that. So they have the confidence with me to make the play. Five yard, five yard. If it's not, we run the football. And that's all we do. I don't count the box. I don't, we keep it simple. All right. Because, I mean, listen, if this guy's in cover two and he's in cover two, he's in cover two. All right. We got six in a box and this linebacker is kind of like here. We can get that. It's common sense. It's just common sense. I don't have the quarterback count in the box. We want to go fast. And it just seems to have worked for us. All right. Here's just a couple examples of what it looks like. Uh, our different schemes we run. Again, this is 20 personnel up top to the left. If you're looking over here, we're running our zone, our split zone. Okay. So we have a fullback in here without a tight end. We're running a bubble to the right. Okay. Don't worry about the, it, it, we're just going to run a hitch or fade to the left. And then we're still running the football to the right. We are in a, a 10 personnel. So we're a three by one. The inside receiver runs the bubble. We're blocking. And then the outside guy over here is going to run his now, uh, now, uh, excuse me, his uh, gift or the fade. And with that, I don't like running any type of um, screen to the Z. I don't like it. I didn't, the key to the normal zone, we run that stuff. We run it. Our terminology is a little different, but I don't like that. What I'll do with the J, he'll run the bubble, or if I want him, he'll run the now route. And then we'll push that way <clears throat> with that. Down the bottom on the left, we're running the now route out of 20 personnel. As you can see, boom, inside zone, split, split zone with the fullback going away. The now route is to the outside receiver. And how we teach the blocking with number two, if he's at eight yards, we push half of it. So we'll go four to push him vertical, and then we'll crack him. That's what we do. If he's at two yards squatting, we go one, and we go here. So we want to go half the distance, so we create some type of push with the defender over top of him. With that. And then the backside's running the gift or, or the, the fade. And then over here, as you can see, to the right, we're going to run the now route three by one. And it's important how we run stuff because we have plays in our black concept where you're going to see this and you're going to see this, but we're going to play around with the inside linebacker. So the now route goes to the outside. We push half, we block here. Okay. We do that. All right. So we'll have fun with that and not getting into the black concept until um, Monday. Cool. All right. For some reason, my older clips, which are basically scrimmages are not working. So you're gonna see me do it. All right, here we go. I'm gonna show 18 plays and we're gonna go run screen, a run pass and run pass, run pass. I kind of just kind of mixed it up so you just don't see a whole bunch of runs. And then, oh, by the way, there's passes. I mix it alternating. We're gonna go 18 in the gun and then 18 under center. And then I'm gonna put my diamond package and show you with a four by one where we're going to do the same thing. We're going to run and have a pass to one way with a screen on the same way. It's something that's been very good to us. Teams have not stopped it because you got to overload a one way and we're reading 
one of the quadrants and we're throwing or running the football with that. All right. Now here's our wildcat guy. This kid right here drives me nuts. Manny Bowen, he played at Penn State, outside linebacker. He had 54 offers for us, uh, transferred in his, into his junior year. No offers, 54 all of a sudden. Uh, tremendous athlete. He plays receiver, running back. I put him at quarterback. Um, when I had taught him the Wildcat, he was so conscious of running all the different RPOs. I was like, damn it, man, you're coming in here. You're going to run the goddamn ball. You ain't throwing fades and all that shit. So he's practicing all that shit. Um, coming the game, um, he forget the pass. He's a, he's a ball hog. He's running the football. All right. So I'm going to just show you right here. First of all, he's too deep. Our heels are at four yards. I want my quarterback's heels at four yards. And then our back, depending, depending on a play, is going to be two yards behind him. Two yards behind him where they both can touch the fingers with that. He's too far back. So the snaps can be too high over his head. And that's that. We do a lot of, we do dead ball snaps. But right now we're just too, uh, too, too far back. The timing of everything isn't the same. All right. Now we're going to run. If you look up top, I named all this stuff. Texas blood. Blood means lead. Bleed, lead. So in our no huddle, we go Texas blood. Texas to me is a zone play. So we're going to go zone lead. On zone lead, we're going to leave the outside guy alone, and it's a zone. So we should be kicking him out or reading him. But what we do is we think we can outrun this guy and get an extra guy in the box blocking for it. That's what we do when we're going to run it. So right now we're going to run QB zone lead with a bubble. Now, this guy should be running a bubble, and this guy who's the quarterback should be blocking, and he should be running a, uh, um, 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 a gift or a fade. But for some reason, I forgot to give them – they're like robots. I forgot to give them the call, and you're going to see them aimlessly just trying to block, and we suck at blocking because we don't practice it. So that's on me. But you're going to see now him running the football and – we should be bubbling it, but this guy kind of gets in a play. And this is what a Division One football player looks like, making a play. And yet we didn't do an RPO on that. But that's a Division One football player that made me look good because I messed up. All right. Now, they're in a the box. We spread them out. We're in tray. So we're going tight end, Jay-Z. Three guys here. As you can see, the safety is... 5'10", he's around 12 to 15 yards back. And they got two, four, six, seven guys in the box, crammed to the box. We have five linemen a, and a tight end, which is six. So they got seven. We have six here, and we have a running back here to block seven. We're going to run quarterback Texas lead, but the quarterback doesn't like it, and he knows he can get five yards with this guy, so he throws the bubble. Top guy runs his um, – his hitch. So he says, I can catch the ball. I get, get him to catch the ball and go five yards. After five yards, I'm good. After five yards, I'm good. I want those guys getting five yards. Get the first down, and then you could dance around. That's why I tell them. Okay. Now, again, I did not call. This is our first game we ever played 15 years ago. So as you can see, we got softness here. We should be running a bubble. And then this guy should be running a hitch. Okay. So these guys got, um, we, we got them out, man. We're going to climb inside because we're running zone to the right. You're going to see two guys coming off the edge. That means we outnumbered them. We outnumbered them. We try and get a minor in our zone, zone play. Like this quarterback is supposed to really read, ride, and decide when we run our zone, but I minor in it. I don't really, I'm not an option guy. So we do it, I teach it, but I'm not very um, effective with it, uh, with detail, because we don't do that stuff. We like to read the backside inside linebacker. So we do this enough just to get by, but you're gonna see that our running back um, hits the hole quick enough where he doesn't make a play. So they got two guys to the outside and we outnumber him inside here. And that's all we're doing. We want to get our guys to second level. That's it. Second level. All right. Now we're going three by one. Again, we're mixing in all the all your run plays that you run, inside run plays, you can put into with this 
pink concept. So we're going to run right now our bench book, which is one back power. He's going to get the ball to the one way and bend it back the other way. Book to me means bend. So we can now put any type of run scheme in with a pink call. So I'll get on the line and I'll yell, yell out, bench book, no, gum, gum. That's it. That's our no huddle call. Bench book, no, gum, gum. Bench book means he gets the ball to the right and goes to the no, which is the left side. We're going to gum to the inside receiver in a three by one. And then the, this guy right here, uh, he's uh, the starting tight end at Holy, Holy uh, Cross, demands a lot of attention. And he now kicks back and throws the football. This quarterback never played quarterback before for us. Came out his junior year. He's like a robot. He should kick back. We want the quarterback to kick back one step, right, to get his momentum and to let the running back clear out. So this kid right here, I couldn't get him to do anything with his footwork. And this is him just turning and throwing. And we still got a 25-yard play on this. But I, did, I was able to teach him RPOs. He was pretty good with that. So, I mean, his technique's not very good, but just get the god darn ball to an athlete. We don't do a great job blocking up there. Don't mock that stuff. I, I didn't lie to you. We don't block well. We still got 23 yards. All right? By just doing that, by just doing that, by just driving vertical with the X up top, he pushed him back two yards. I teach my receivers, okay, to break down three to four yards from him. So we call it an ooze block because if he misses him, okay, he still has to dodge him and all that stuff. We don't want to get there too quick, have him shed you, and then he makes the play. So we kind of try and occupy the guy by kind of – so we don't like whiff like that. Okay. And the kid makes a good play like that. But if we can only have blocked it, if we only could have blocked it very well, again, we don't teach blocking too much. Now we're in empty. Any run play. Here's our running back right here. He's going to go outside this receiver. Nine out of 10 times that cornerback will cover your biggest, fattest guy you ever put outside and isolate your inside receiver who's normally your outside receiver with an outside linebacker if you're in if they're in man so we like to do things like that so the running backs out here okay the cornerback by rule is going to cover him outside we're going to run one back power and go how we call this we just go spar spar and i point to him and i just go that she has gum it's going to him so we're bubbling with the guys there we're bubbling here and we're going to crop the picture, and he's going to run the football with the quarterback. Bang. And that's it. Quarterback sees the box, says, I like the numbers. I like the holes, natural holes. He's going to kick it and go. <coughs> and that's it. That's all you want. So we like to spread the field 53 yards from sideline to sideline. My theory is we want to rip it, rip it, rip it, and then there's a hole when we're going to go vertical. So we're going to make them defend sideline to sideline, but we want to go vertical somehow as quick as we could. It might be a runner. It might be a receiver, somebody, but we're trying to get vertical. We don't want to keep going sideways. We want to get vertical. All right, now we're in empty again. <coughs> Excuse me. That's our bubble. We're running the football. As you can see, we're leaving our, our linemen, right? And that's it. You know, that looks like an uncovered, but he wanted to – what we taught our, our guy, sometimes if we felt like that we weren't going to get outside this guy and there, he was playing cover two, we slow play it, like an uncovered rule, and that would be our bubble. And the linemen ain't downfield because we're throwing it real quick. Both sides are in bubble. So we like to steal the grass. So in other words, this guy's blitzing. And this is the area. He slow plays it right here. And that's what we got. And I'm going to tell you a secret what we call that. So instead of gum, our receiver goes sunny, sunny, which means hot, hot. That means he's going vertical and throw the football because I'm slowing down and get me the ball quick, it's hot, all 
all right? Meaning you put your hand on, on, on the stove, it's hot. Shit, it's fucking hot. That's what we do. So we yell out, hot, hot, uh, sunny, sunny. Bang, get into the football. That's it. Again, our theory, our theory is to get vertical, to get vertical as quick as possible. So if they're running a bubble, get up field as quick as you could. So if we see this open to the boundary, we do what we did right here. And that receiver is the all-time leading receiver in our county. 139 catches he had. Very smart kid. Police officer now, coaches for us. Good. All right, we're going to run one back power. But we're doing it with the quarterback. Both sides should be running gum. For some reason, he's not. But he should be running bubble. You'll see the top guy doing it. We're going to run one back power. With this, uh, this team, they were an upfield team when we gave them the illusion we're passing the football. So you're going to see our quarterback kick back like he's going to throw it, and he runs it like a draw. So we're going to run one back power with bubble. So we're going to run this con con, con no gum. And as you can see, the guy upfield right here, he's upfield, easy kick out. Kick out, running power, and that's that. Again, we're on the football. We get in our alignment, and all we yell is Kong no gum gum. And there we go. That's it. That's all. And you listen, anytime you guys can get a play where the quarterback's not getting touched, that's a good play. Now, again, if you spread these guys out, no matter, you could put any run play you have here, do it. And just put your quick screens out here. And, you know, you could you could even go bubble here, now here, and run the football here. It doesn't matter. I love running the football with the quarterback, though. It's an extra blocker. These don't work. All right. This one doesn't either. Scrimmages. Nope. All right, here we go. This is like an uncovered. So we're running the football with our one back power with, our, excuse me, empty. It's our quarterback power in our empty and we're gonna run um, an uncovered. But it's a run play. As you can see, the linemen are blocking for the quarterback and we're throwing a football. Okay, this was just an uncovered. Sunny, sunny, that's it. My bad, that was bubble. But okay, now here's the proof that I don't know how to coach um, option football. <laughs> We're in doubles, all right? In our scrimmages, we never go no huddle. We don't let people know that we're huddling. We're going to run our zone play to the right. We're going to read the outside overhand guy. My quarterback reads it, and for some reason, he runs all the way to the sideline and there. Now, use option guys, you know, I think you go tight to the circle and get vertical as quick. Yeah, I, again, this is a minor for us. Um, we were dabbling it with it a little bit in the scrimmage. Uh, it scored a touchdown for us. All right. Instead, he gets really, really wide. Um, scores a touchdown. Um, makes me look good, even though I can't coach that aspect of that, that scheme right there. And we're in empty. We're in empty right now, and we're going to run quarterback Texas, which is zone and we're going to run gum. And we want to go fast and do stuff like that so we don't know we're lined up and the quarterback knows that he's reading and right, cropping the picture. Can I get five here? Can I get five here? Can I get five here? Well, it looks pretty congested right here. I think I can get it, uh, our bubble, and we get to throw the bubble. That's it. That's it. Five. Five yards. That's all we're asking for. Again, if you got clips of guys getting 90, well, then you know what? That's a lot of a, a lot of good stuff by your athletes right here. Now, it's again, when you're running this stuff, linemen love this stuff when the running back gets the football and gets upfield without getting touched. We're going to run our zone play. Zone play to the right, bubbles both ways, which we call gum, and we hit it upfield. So the quarterback's reading, doesn't think he can get five to the outside either way. So what does he do? Okay, and again, we're running this zone. But we're not blocking that edge right here. He's not coming hard off, off the edge. 
we should be reading them. That is the that, that, that is the true way that you should be reading the zone because we're not blocking them. My theory is to get this lineman to the next level and keep our eyes on this dude, and that's that. So I have to do a better job with that if I'm going to keep running and stuff like this. But because he's off our quarterback, he's a pro-style kid, was able to get our kid at the second level, and that's it. Okay? You don't know. We don't know where defenders are going to line up, depending on the ball, uh, the hash, um, you know, what formations we got. I don't know where they're going to line up. So we try and put everybody as a threat to get the football. And we just let the quarterback say, where can you get five? Where can you get five? We're going to run our zone play now again to the left, to the left, and we're going to run bubble. Run bubble. That's it. Five yards. There you go. That's it. We run the bubble so much that people don't respect it. If that makes sense. We run it so much, that action, that people do not respect it. Now, we're going to run a slant with it later on when we're reading the backside inside linebacker. We're going to show bubble and then run a slant over top of it and read the backside inside linebacker in my talk on Thursday. So we're doing it for a reason. But we're a bubble, bubble, bubble action in a lot of our schemes that we do. Why? Because it works. Get me five. Get him the ball. There you go. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. That's all I ask for. I don't get greedy. You know, my my some of my coaches scream, oh, we should have got more. Get me five. We're gonna run split zone. He's kicking out. He's getting the football. These guys are running bubble up top. Backside guys running ISO. This is our best receiver. 6'4, 225, starting tight end at Holy Cross, right here. Um the brother played for us. He went to Purdue, uh, tight end. So we put a guy here. He's got two guys over him here. You got two guys out here. And now we got holes here. Where's the quarterback going? Running the zone. There you go. That's it. That's all we're doing. Common sense. It's real simple. No, no, hand it off. That's it. And this kid here never played quarterback before. That's it. That's all we're doing. Cool. cool. All right. All right. Here we go. Now we're going empty. Um, we're going to run our now concept. Push in here. Step back. He, I no, normally don't do this, but he wanted that the now route. I hate going the now route with nobody blocking for you. I'd rather do the hitch. You know, but that's what he did. You know, the quarterback gave him the call and all that. And we're running the football here. We're running one back power. We're going to the left. There's the fullback. All right. And he's kicking the guy out. Guards in the hole. We block it like shit. Thank God we threw it. All right. Get me five yards. And that's it. It's hard to. I don't get mad at the kids. If they saw it and they reacted and they did it a certain way, and I always ask him, what did you say? And it, right, if we got over five yards, okay. I don't overcoach it. I want the guys to go fast. If you start overcoaching things like this, the kids will start shrinking up and they won't run, run it, run it well the next time you run it. So I do not do a lot of corrections. I do suggestions, not corrections in, in our schemes like this. All right, here we go. We're going into our empty set right here. We're going to run our, our inside zone with a bubble. Our quarterback was a good runner, and we were a threat. We were more of a threat this year with getting a running back out of the way or using them as a blocker. Now, we're running zone. When you run zone, this guy is leaving this guy alone. So what I tell the quarterback when we're running it is to outrun him. He's the guy you got to make miss. So you're going to see him get quick and back. He's the guy that is unblocked when you're running inside zone. So he has to know that he is responsible for this guy because we read him if there's a running back there. Now he's running it. He needs to know that this guy right here is unblocked. So you're going to see him get quick, and then he's going to get underneath him. Quick. There you go. 
has to know that. That's the one thing that we do, do we teach it that way and empty, that he knows that we're getting an extra blocker. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, two, four, six right here, and he's going to outrun them. He didn't like the bubble. And this was actually a third down play. Hard to get upset when he does that. All right, cool. All right, now I want to show you it's a little different. A little different when you run it out of center, under center. Meaning we hit the screens a little bit more when we are under center. It just hits quicker. Um, it, it just hits a lot quicker with that. And that's that. You're not more of a threat in the pass game. So we get different kind of looks when we're in the gun opposed to under center. Okay. I also don't like running it too much um, with a tight end. If you have a tight end, you don't have an extra receiver to read here. So right now you only have, are they covering the bubble or the quick screen or the, or you have to run the football, but at times you're just better than them up front and you don't give a shit. Okay. So we're running right now our zone lead with bubble. And we hit it pretty good. So, but again, with our run plays, we're always going to have under center, unless we're running power because the guard's pulling, we're going to throw the bubble or the now round. Okay. Have a threat. Good. 97 yards. All right. Now we're playing the best team I ever coached against. A team called Manasquan. They had five Division One athletes. This is our first football season of varsity football. I have nothing but juniors, sophomores, and freshmen, and we're playing the best team that I think ever in the short conference, which is 43 schools. Second play, first play of the game, they took our, our tail back out of the game, knocked them, almost knocked them out. Here we are in the second play. We're running inside zone, bubble, um, and we, we, we got – the, the bubble right here. And so we're running in Texas. Yes. With a bubble. We got him in space. It was the biggest play they gave up all year. It was great, but that's what we had to do. Get him the ball, make a play 58 yards. <coughs> Good. All right. Now we're playing Manasquan again. Manasquan's a traditional power down here. Here's the kid from Penn state, Manny Bowen, 54 offer kit outside linebacker. Um, so we're going to run our, our play right here <clears throat> inside zone. We call it blood, Texas blood for bleed. So instead of saying Texas bleed, it sounds like lead. We say Texas blood, blood, and we're going to go, yes, and we're going to gum it. So we don't think we can get five, hand the ball off to a division one kid. All right. And that's what you get. Makes Makes our plays look a lot better when you got a kid that can do that. All right. It's amazing. When people say, Hey, do we still have that play? Yeah, we do, but a different player is running it now. All right. That, and this Manasquan team was undefeated when we played them. And, and all it was is inside zone with a lead play. That's it. And that's it. Packaged in with a screen. And that's that. Okay, if the quarterback's going to throw the screen, he's going to kick back one step. Now, here's – we're playing a Coach Generelli, a legend down here, Raritan team. They, they're, they're, they're bracking at us, cover two, and they bump out the linebacker. To me, it's not open. So we got one, two, three, four, five guys covering the outside guys. Five guys. And this guy is kind of out here. The one, two, three, four, five, and six in a box – we have five linemen, six in a box. We're running inside zone. So we're going to only block five of them with our six. We should run the football. We should. We really should. But my quarterback thinks that I can get five yards here. I don't know how he was thinking that. Now, if it didn't work, his ass would have been grass. But because it did what it did, I patted him on the back. I said, good play. And, and we went right back in um, the next series and 
and that, and fix it later on. But he did not make a good read. You should run it. Instead, he does this. And he just makes a play this way. It should not have been a big play. And we got a 57-yard touchdown with it. And But he, he thought in his head, coach, I thought we can get five. So he saw it a certain way. I had to go with it. We fixed that. Um, fix that the next day at practice. All right. So we're running zone here. We're playing at parochial school. Um, you're going to see the guy up top, I think, running a fade. These guys running a bubble screen here. All right. And we just run inside zone. But again, again, when you play us, you have to always respect the pass game because at any time we can throw the football, we're doing this. We're not trying to fight block and block. We want to make those defenders defend. Now, I love that. I love the reaction of the DBs where they're moving here because we want to see their, where, where their reaction is. By them doing that, we know they're not going to be forced players. Um, I like that. So the ball can go in many different directions at any time. Okay. Oops. Oops. All right. All right. Now, there's two on two, and the box is kind of cloudy, and you got here. So because – I said to him, like, why did you – I asked him, why did you throw the ball on the bubble? Because they were playing off. And he can get five yards because he thought he would be pushing back. And he did. He makes a play, but then he cuts it frigging back. And he puts like a 32-yard play on this play. So he got it. Got him the football quick. He made a guy juke. How do you get mad? I mean, our philosophies get us five. Um, it was cloudy in the other areas. And I said, good job. All right. Again, we're running zone. We're going to go zone to the right. Texas, yes, gum. Here we go. And that's it. Get the guy in space. Get the guy in space. All right. Now, we're in no huddle. Um, we're running the same play. We call it Peter. Repeat. We just ran the football, the same play. We just ran the football. All right. So we ran our zone lead play there. Bang, bang. And we're pounding the crap out of it. We're running bubble here. All right. Well, we run in the same play. Did not change the verbiage at all. And watch how many guys are in the box. So the defense goes, and thanks for running the same play, which we are but it's packaged in because we were running the bubble just didn't give it to them. They got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 guys in a box, two on one here. All we did here is kick back, boom. That's it, that's it. So we Peter, Peter, get on the ball, copy, copy, whatever you say, get him the football, throw it. You gotta defend it. What happens is when we go no huddle and we want to repeat the play, and let's say we ran the bubble. Let's say we ran the bubble. They get on the ball, they might overplay the bubble, and we run the football and get it. And that's it. Get them the football. Again, you want your kids to be thinking fast. Package your screen game with a run game and put it together and make them defend sideline to sideline. Again, we're going Texas gum. All right, we give Texas yes, Texas hot, Texas red, Texas gold, whatever you're saying, and run the bubble. And here we go. Now, we got to block it well, too. You got to win the point of attack. I'm not sitting here telling you that, hey, to put these plays in, it's going to 100% work. 
you still got to win the blocks. You still got to win your inside zone, your one back power, your two back power. You got to win that stuff. But what you're doing is you are finding the, the grass of what part of the field and you're attacking it. You're attacking it with the bubbles, maybe with the, the, the hitch route or if there's seams in the middle of the field and doing it. You're not just saying run zone and everybody block. You're not just saying run bubble, everybody block for the bubble or run hitch or hitches, all right? And I'll show you why I don't like that. And a couple more plays. All right. All right, bubble, look at this defender right here. This defender right here is not respecting the bubble. He's the guy in conflict right now. So we're gonna run zone. Now, if our receivers are always talking. Every gum in the book is gone. Trident, Bubblicious, Bazooka. They were basically talking like that to let the quarterback know. <laughs> you know, hey, you know, try that, try that, right? You know, I'm open. And there we go. And that's it. We out leveraged them. Out leveraged the guy. Good. Couple more here, and I want to get to our quads. There we go. Okay, just made a tack. Uh, uh, the kid just missed a tackle. Uh, he was coming off the edge. Um, Right now they have they're in zero coverage. This is tough, and, and this is be one of the reasons why I like to have the the pass game put in. I mean, instead of him being out here, he's now coming off the edge. So they're really bum rushing. This is just an athlete making a play. All right, that's not a great blocking scheme for that because he outmanned us there. But um, we do not audible. We don't. I like to say that our gum and our hitch and our fade to the other side or the audibles built in. I don't like to check, check, mayday, mayday and change a play. Everything we do has an outlet to do. I don't like to, I don't like to call audibles at all. We, we dummy audible, but I don't like to audible. I don't like to let the lineman know, hey, we're gonna change things up. It's hard enough to get them in a goddamn stance. And then we're gonna tell them to do something different. Uh-uh, not gonna do it. All right, again, zone, with the bubble. Again, five yards, that's all we do. I know other coaches count the box and the, the, the conflict defense. I, I don't do that stuff. Can you get me five? And that's that. Now, wh what we did is we uh, kicked the tight end back. We motioned them and we created another lead blocker. We didn't bubble. On this, I just wanted to show you we were running zone lead a different way. We kick him back. That, that kid went to Purdue. Um, just something different. Just something different with that. All right, last one. I think it's the last one. This is the end of the half. I mean, it's the end of half. Again, we don't do a play that, that, that says, you know, hey, um, I got myself into a, the other team. When we run our bubbles and, and um, with a run play, it's at the end of the game and we're winning by a lot. And the other team's going, screw it. They're not going to pass. They're beating us by a lot. So they outman us in a box. And our guys know that the rule says we throw the bubble if it's open. Well, we hit the bubble um, for like a big 40, 50 yard play and I'm getting shit from the other coach. And I can't take it off because I have to protect my players because there's not enough of players in the box to block. They just didn't block, cover. They put one guy out and they did it. So I don't do <coughs> change. I mean, this is built in. So this is the end of the half where they're in a prevent defense. We're running zone and they're bubbles. Okay, they're off. So he throws it and that's it. I mean, we were losing by, by two touchdowns here. We just, get, you know, we put our kid in space, five yards. It's the end of the half, and that's it, because it was a little distorted defense. They were in. As you can see, we don't run against defenses like this in the shore. It's the end of the half. All right, I think I got two more. All right, again, you're seeing a lot of the bubble action here. 
a nice play, bang. All right, the free safety comes late because he's kind of playing in between and he's respecting the pass game and that's what you want. You want, you want that. You want a running back hitting a hole right up field. Everybody else thinks they're getting a football. I love it. Love it. Now, when we're running this, I call it triple. I ask uh, the, the, um, our local newspaper, say, what offense you run insane? I go, yeah, we're running the triple. Like, you're running the triple? Yep. So they put it on there. We're running the triple option. I got a lot of shit from all my coaches going, you're trying to bullshit everybody. But to us, the triple is this. One, two, three. That's triple to us. And then on Monday, when we're, in, we're running quick game and he's running an out, he's running a fade, he's running an ISO, all right, and our, or that we can run the football, it's four, four options, all right? My receivers are needy, needy kids. They want the football or think they're getting the football every time. That's how I have to run my program with that. Good. Last one. Last one. This is in a downpour rain. He, like this guy right here is respecting uh, the screen. They were in shock that we threw it because it was just, just really, really raining hard. Okay. All right, good. I did not explain where I got this from. I don't know who started the, um, the run with the bubble, but I do know that Lou Versillo from Lacey and Craig Sicardo, two coaches that I respect and I coach with, with Lou, went to see Urban Meyer at Notre Dame. And he was a receiver coach at the time. And he had, and, and then, you know, because he was the low man in the totem pole there, so Coach Rosillo and Coach Sicardo had his ear. So he goes, you want to see the best run game that's now coming in, coming, um, coming away? It is the weak side, weak side ISO with the bubble. The weak side ISO with the bubble. He goes, we're going to package a screenplay. This is where he had developed at Notre Dame, where they're going to ISO here, and then they're going to either throw it or hand the ball off. And Lou Vercilla brought that to the short conference. I didn't say he, he originated it, but I didn't hear of any of this crap. And this was um, 24 years ago. Um, he brought this in, and I loved it. So me being a receiver coach, I said, God darn, let me play around with this shit. I like this stuff right here. And Urban Myers wanted to do that at the gun. Did it all the time, but it was a weak side play with the with the with the screen game to the outside, and and that's something that he kind of evolved to even bigger stuff that he's doing right now. And when he was at Ohio State, but Coach Rasil at least he brought that to the short conference, and then other people were start because other people didn't know how to defend it, how we were running. When we first started putting that at Lacey, we averaged every time we threw the bubble. We averaged 23 yards a catch. Incredible. Um, he was a little bit of a, he had a little bit of a tight butt running it. He would, we would call it ISO bubble. Um, and he would say, run the ball. You can't, you got to marry the whole concept. You have to say that, that if this guy is playing monkey in the middle, make him pay. If he's out here, you run it. If he's in between, run it. If he's, um, out wide, run it. You got to you got to marry the scheme and can't bastardize it. And you know, at Lacey we did. We kind of said, okay, it's on or it's off. That thing right here. Now I want to show you one other thing. I want to put one one other thing. It is my um, ooh, did not see that. Um, but the, 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 it is my diamond package, four by one. Let me get to it. Hold on one second. All right, here we go. All right, 16, 16, boom, boom, boom. Good. All right, it's our pink concept, which is pre-snap read. Oh, oh, my bad. All right, now here we go. Every time we put this in, we get on the ball, we go diamond, diamond. All right, and we just call the play. So on diamond, we have the now screen here on, on the right side where the receiver is going 
back here, it's a now screen. So over here, we're gonna run our ISO concept, which is gonna be a hitch slant fade. I hate the slant out of this, but I'll give the kids the option or we run the football. And that's simple. He goes, no, no, yes, or yes, no, no, whatever it is, the first yes he likes, he can get five yards. I like it. I like it. Now we're terrible blockers again. And I'm putting a goddamn freaking now screen to the right. Putting four. What I want to do is put four guys here, have them overload, and I want to run the football or throw it to my best receiver to the other side. So you're going to see, and teams don't know how to line up when you put this kid right here. Okay. I taught the offense. He was hurt all year. I taught the offense because your other quarterback got hurt. He's a senior. So I put these pink schemes in and he was able to kind of do it as best as he could after three days. This is our last game of the year, a couple of years ago. So he was taught that crop the picture. Can you throw it here? No. How about here? Coach, these guys can't block because I don't feel comfortable. No. So he runs the football. Common sense. He is a running back. There he goes up the field. He does it. Um, and that's that. Again, we're putting the kids in space. We don't over, <coughs> we don't over coach this concept. We, we, we do it. We, we do, we do it for three to four minutes during a practice, but we don't over coach it. It's already put in. This is our now screen concept here. He's an ISO quick fade slant or hitch and we're running the football. This guy right here does not want to run the football. Doesn't like it. <coughs> so I don't care if you put one guy in a box, he's throwing a freaking football. All right. So he likes, I mean, we can run the football here, but he likes to throw to this kid here, the kid who's starting at Holy Cross. So he gets the football, throws it. Bang. Okay. Our linemen are blocking for him. They have no idea that if he threw it or running it. They have no idea. No idea. And that's it. It's our diamond pack. It's four by. All right. Now, again, our best receiver is the lone receiver. We're quite, I want to put everybody and their mother to the left side. Everybody and their mother. We're going four guys here. So right here, we should, we should be able to say that's a good thing. Three on three, and he, I mean, if there's a street fight, we better win that street fight. Not us. We're getting our heads knocked in here, whatever. But we still got this luck. They got the guys in the box. This guy don't even run the goddamn football, and they leave him open. That's it. Five yards. That's all we want. That's all we want. Again, get on the football, diamond, diamond. They go on there, boom, and we run the play. Lyman, get the run play. You guys go here. That's it. We're packaging a run with the concept of the quick screen and the ISO to the other side. It's not like we have to uh, make up plays and they have to remember shit. Lyman know what Texas is. Lyman know what this is. We're putting it together. We're putting it together. Just a couple more with this one back power. All right, as you can see, everybody plays it a little different. I had a, two better ones, but I can't find it. I'll have it for you guys on Monday, okay? Again, ISO's open. He knows he's got it. And we, and guys, we go with our verbiage. We have fun with it. If the ISO's open, he might go glasses, glasses. Glasses are for eyes. And he just telling them, hey, I'm going to throw it to you. Even though we don't have to do it, sometimes they kind of want to reassure them. And as long as it doesn't affect their, their movement to where it's going, I don't mind it. Five yards. That's it. That's it. That's all it is. Five yards. Last one. That's it. We're packaging stuff to be here. Cool. 
All right, is there one more? And I see it. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Cool. Let me see if I can see you guys on here. Um, is there any questions? Any questions? Any question, guys, with anything, with their pre-snap stuff? Hey, Coach. Yeah. Do you run anything else out of that quads or just the now screen? Oh, yeah. no, no, no. That's, not, that's all we do. Okay. I mean, are there a billion things? Yeah, I don't like to do too many gadgety stuff. Coach, all I'm going to say is this on the thing, is that you don't know where they're going to line up. You just don't know where they're going to line up. Um, meaning this. You can run this different times, the ball in the middle of the field, ball on one hash, ball on the other. You can go here, what I just did. We put the quad to the boundary. Like right here. We put the quads to the field right here, right? That's, that's one look. You can go right here. Quads to the boundary and put your best receiver to the field. You don't know how they're going to react. Because we just like call this in the middle of a no huddle. All of a sudden, you know, we go diamond, diamond, boom, we get on the ball and we and, and we and we do it. They don't know where to line up because you're talking about a four receivers to one side, best receiver there, and the still run game intact. I don't have time to change different like like I don't run this enough to deviate to something else. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to hit. I want to get my athlete the ball if they're not playing it right. I want to get my athlete the ball if they're not playing it right and run it. If I start changing a different concept with it, it's kind of like we're not going to get good at this. So we don't run this. We run this maybe one to two times a game. And with that, the field position, um, you know, where the ball's located, changes where, like, I don't know how they're going to line up. So I don't want to add different plays. We don't do too many different plays for our kids because it confuses them. You know, it confuses yeah, it makes sense. I take pride if a kid missed a practice or two that he didn't forget our offense. I've been in a program that we were still installing on Wednesday for a Friday game. I refuse to do that. So, and I'm not saying kids miss our practices, but you know, with injuries and all that stuff, the kids understand our concepts of what we're trying to do with that. Anything else, guys? Hey, Coach. Yep. Do you guys run any other run game? With run what? Now? Any other run game? Oh, yeah. Like, oh. Oh, oh, yeah. Coach, this, what I showed you today, was only, I'm trying to move a different screen. Uh, yeah, we, we run inside zone out of one back. One back, we'll run, which is zone. Um, we'll run bench, which is power, it's our terms. In the pre-snap, coach, we're, we're, we're gonna run pin and pull, we're going to run all that stretch. We're going to run pitch. We're going to do all that shit. But I'm saying when we run, when we're running the football here, we're running with our pink. We're going to run zone. We're going to run bench with two running backs because we run a sniffer. We'll run this with blood, which is zone lead. We'll run trap, which is split zone. And then we'll run power, which is what we call is calm. So, yeah, we're talking inside. Coach, if we're going to run the ball outside, we're not running our screen game to where they're running. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying when we're going to run inside like this, we're going to do some type of screens here, and we're going to attack here. That's all we're doing. Now, any other run game you guys are doing, maybe you're running veer, maybe you're run, I don't, whatever you're doing, you could put your run game in here and insert your screens without the, the linemen and then your 
quick game to the outside. That, that's it. That's all we do. That's all we do. Let me get that to the front page that I had. It'd be a little easier, cleaner. Uh, up, 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 up. And, and coach, if you stay with me for the next couple of days, okay, you'll see why we, this is, again, this is our, our, our how we start our first practices. When we did uh, the COVID, I installed all this crap where that's, with that. So our pink coach is our quick games. So we are going to go pink today. We did where we're going to throw quick screens. On Monday, we're going to throw the ball vertical to the outside. We're not going to throw balls behind the line of scrimmage. We're going to throw um, – here, let me just show you that since I got you. Quick game. I got every one of my plays I ever ran in 15 years all here. My coaches want me to delete it. I'm like, are you freaking crazy to me? All right, here we go. So here's our pink, but now we're going to throw the ball vertical. Okay, bing, 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 bing. All right, so examples are here now. Instead of running bubble, we're gonna run off. Off, to me, off means out and fade. So we, we use those, what do you call them? Acronyms, whatever you call them. Hikers or hitches to the outside. And sloppy, okay, I don't run double slant. Sloppy to me is a bubble and a slant, and that's what we do. So we're gonna throw the ball vertical now instead of running screens. And because we're doing that, we can't leave the end alone. So we use 20 personnel where the fullback kicks the end out, everybody's blocked, and now we can throw the football and not worry about the lineman knocking the quarterback's head off. Does that make sense? Coach, does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. so we can run power out of this. We can run our split zone, um, and it's protected. So if they're, this guy's not playing him and we like the out, kick back, throw it. Um, you know, if we want to run double hitches, hikers. If we want to run sloppy, he runs the bubble, he runs here, he kicks back and throws it. I don't particularly yeah. like sloppy uh, with that unless we're reading the inside linebacker, but I like off and hikers all right so um off oh let me just show you a couple then since you got it um that's okay receivers are running okay now the receivers are going vertical we have a fullback i love sniffer i love sniffer i do i love it um we could do so many different things we run RPOs with him too. So this is called calm, power. So we're going to run power to the left and we're going to run off, out fade with the backside guy who runs ISO. ISO, hitch, slant, fade. And that's that. Let me just show you a couple. That's that. So we're not always running screens. We're not. But I have to show that segment first before we get to the others. All right. So right here we're running... Uh, power to the right. He's running the ISO. These guys are running out, fade. So in this concept, we have we don't audible. So if you're blitzing on me, we got a fade, we got a fade and an out, and we still have the run game. So we don't need to audible. We just get on the ball. We go con gas off, con gas off, ready, ready, down, set up, and now it's built in. Fade, fade, and that's that. We don't like to audible and say, oh shit, they're blitzing, Lyman. Just pass, bro. No, run block. I'm getting the ball quick off. One step throw. You're going to see him back shoulder fade. We teach back shoulder fade all the time in our warm ups. This was something we always practice. He just chucks it, um, makes a really nice catch. Um, but again, no audible, just get it in here. So now we're going to run our split zone. He's here. Um, he's going to get the football and it's split zone here. Uh, okay, it's fourth down. We just got to play. Uh, it's fourth and three. All right. What do most teams go? Are we going to go punt block? Or are we going to go punt safe? We get on the football. Fire, fire. Get on the ball. All right. So all of a sudden now, there's no uh, special teams exchanges. 
and we out. Texas trap, yes, off, off, off. It's fourth and four. We get on the football. They're screaming out stuff. We get on the football, and we go, bang, one step, throw. That's it. That's all we're doing. Again, we want the athletes to get and demand the grass that's open. He's running his ISO route. He liked the slant. They're running out fade right here. He didn't like it. He uh, didn't like the run game with fourth and four. He wanted to throw it to starting tight end at Holy Cross, and it's hard to fight with that. Gets the ball, well, kicks back. Now, coach, he kicks back to get away from the the um, to get to get away from the running back, plus to get the timing of a three step route. Kick back, one step, and that's it. That's it. Again, this is pink, except we're going now quick game. So we're going to go Texas trap, yes, off. This is pink. And how do we know it's pink? I'm scratching my wrist while I'm calling it out. He's looking at me. Only me and him know, know the signal. And all the signal is, is me giving him a cheat code to the, to, the, to the play. So he knows now that there's no read. I'm either throwing it or handing it off. There's no read. He knows what off is. It's out, fade, and the backside guy is ISO. And that's that. It's that simple. This kid here never played quarterback before, but he understand the concepts of our, of our plays. Kick back, and there we go. Hand the ball off. When in doubt, run the ball. When in doubt, run the ball. Again, this is pink, all right, except now we're throwing it in a quick game. And that's it. That's all we're doing. All we're doing is one more for this. That's it. All right, and I'm going to do more of that on, on a Monday with that. But, yes, Coach, the answer is we do run um, different stuff, um, you know. Um, and, and since I got you, let me just give you a little taste of one thing, since I do got you. What the hell? I want to show you how what, – what, what do I mean by backside inside linebacker? What does it look like? That's all I want to do is just show you that. So maybe you don't want to hear it. Maybe you think I'm a nut job. I don't know. but but. It, here, here's all of our stuff that we do. Um, oh, I gave you the wrong thing. That's our screens, um, our pops. No, What's up? No, definitely, I want to hear it. All right, I just want to show you this. So you're, this is what I'm going to be talking about on Thursday. This is called our black or blue for backside linebacker. And that's how, that's our pop series, coach. The backs, the backside inside linebacker. When when we were in school, when we were playing pop Warner, we used to have this play. We fake to the fullback, and then we threw it to replace them. Didn't you do that when you were in pop Warner? We called it tight end dump or something like that. And what happens is a coach would say, "Hey, the tight end dumps open. They're blitzing." So then you run that play, and then you throw it, and it wasn't open the next time. And then the coach goes, you know what? That place sucks. No, it only sucks when it doesn't work. But when it works, it's great. And we never could use it at the right time. So we're using that concept, except we're going to read it and throw it only when it's open. And it's awesome. So if this guy vacates this window and it's open, we're throwing the football to the pop. Yet these guys are running the quick game to the outside all the time. It's awesome. <clears throat> I'll, I'll talk about the rules on Thursday, but I just want to just show you what it looks like because we do it out of different things. Um, I Reading the backside inside linebacker to us is where we really started elevating our game. Okay, hold on. We've had Four Division One tight ends come out of our program. We've been very fortunate. Um, but a lot of this stuff's here. So now, our rules, when we run the pop to the black, I don't want to confuse everybody with it. I really kind of want to do it all at once. But I'm just going to show you what I'm talking about. When we run our pop, pop our, our, our black concept, we read the backside inside linebacker, which is him. We're reading this guy right here. We're running the ball here. Our tight end is going to get higher than him. And away Coach, from we can't see a screen. Oh, shit. All right, my bad. I'll get it. Where is it? How do I do? Uh, 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 uh. Sorry, guys. 
uh, share. Can you see? There it is. All right, yeah. my bad, my bad. I'm sorry, guys. Um, when we're running our pop series, this is our black concept. We are re reading the backside inside linebacker. Okay, so maybe I should have showed you this way. So you wasn't prepared for this, but. Okay, it's probably easier teaching it this way. Okay, so how we teach the pop is our inside receiver. So if we go, we call it Pepsi. So soda pop. The kids think I'm friggin' nuts that I call it soda pop, but that's how I verbiage it. So I'll go taco no, which is inside zone. We lock it in the backside. Uh, and I will talk about this all in great detail. Taco to us is zone to the left. And we are blocking out. When you go to Taco Bell, okay, we eat out. So we block out. So it's man to the backside, zone to the left. All right. So we're going to, inside receiver is going uh, uh, to run uh, as high as the inside linebacker. First guy from the center. Once he gets at his ass, he now goes to the grass. So wherever the free safety or the near safety is, he goes away. If the free safety is there, he gets up the scene. If the safety is there, once he gets past the mic, he bangs it hard away from him, like a slant. That's the concept. It's freaking awesome. And we just steal it. And, and once you get past that mic linebacker, it's off to the races. And our rule is, if you're a receiver all by yourself, you run a gift. When you pop the question to your wife, you get on your knees, Okay, and you give her a gift. The gift to us is a hitch. It's five. And that's what we tell them. So if we go to our pop series, our, our receiver by himself. Okay, we don't count the tight end of the receiver. A receiver by himself runs a gift. That's how he remembers it. The inside receiver, if you're not getting the pop, you run a bubble. You run a bubble automatically. Outside receiver with an inside receiver, he runs a fade. There's your, there's your audible. Fade with a bubble, a gift, and a pop. Quarterback gets on the ball. If he likes the quick game, he takes a step back, he throws it. Takes a step back, he throws it. If he doesn't like this, he goes, I'm going to read this linebacker, and I'm either going to give the ball or I'm going to pop it. And that's what we do. And it's like stealing. Now, now with that, I just want to show you a couple of them before I, I, I put you guys to sleep. I appreciate you guys coming here because I would have been talking to myself. My family's on a vacation. All right, here we go. Just to show you this. If you have a tight end or a good inside receiver guy, you got to put this in. Awesome. This. Okay, so our rule is gift, bubble, fade, pop, bang, and he's getting the football. We're running one back power, coach. One back power. We're reading this dude right here. This dude we're reading. Here we go. So you're going to see him. All right, that's a run read right there. All right, he's backing up. He's backing up. All right, so we're handing the ball off. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. It looks like draw. You got DBs covering receivers, and we're running the friggin' football. It takes away their run fits. All right? So our running back, and I'll go over to footwork, too, with all that stuff. Because now, now this is important. Because if you got a quarterback, your number one is going to know all these plays. Your number two Ah, coach, who do I read on this? So again, I use the term black for backside linebacker. All right. We've used visuals too. I've used a baby picture for pre-snap because it's preschool. I use men in black, Will Smith for men in black backside linebacker. And then ugly, you could put a coach's face up and it's just giggles. But whatever it is, whatever you're telling them, you're reminding him where his eyes are. So right now we're in black. So we're reading this dude. 
So now this is this is where you got to be disciplined. You got to coach this up. Look where he's looking. His eyes are right there. All right, and he hands the ball off. So looking at it fast, normal speed. This was a huge play during this game. That's it. All right, and that's it. All right, now he throws the ball a little late. We traded the tight end on this. So we traded the tight end. All right, we trade, trade. So I, I yelled out my call, trade, trade. And we went, um, we went bench no, bench no. And I don't say why Pepsi, because anytime I say Pepsi, it's always the tight end unless I want someone else to run it. All right. So the rule is if I, if he's getting it, it's Pepsi, which means pop. So I could say run bench no, tight end pop, but I call it Pepsi. If I wanted someone else to get it, I go X Pepsi. And then the tight end automatically blocks. So he either gets the pop or he blocks it. So it's built in. We're not wordy. Okay, so here we go. Look at her free safety is right here. The free safety's lost because <coughs> we're in no huddle. Here's the free right here. We're in no huddle. We throw, we showed three by one. He trades. We're going no huddle. And he kind of gets there late. The quarterback throws the ball a little late, still a touchdown. Because he gets higher than the than, than the linebacker. And again, this quarterback never played quarterback before. Got it to him. And that's that. So Hit a touchdown. You got some clearer ones here, though. That was like a sloppy one. Coach, you asked me if we run different plays. The answer is yes. Here's our pin and pull. Um, I love doing pin and pull. I love pulling guards and reading a linebacker's reaction. We run the stab play. Now, we, we ran it a couple ways, our stab. We run the now route here. Pushes forward, back. He runs a hitch. And we read the linebacker right here. We're running pin and pull. We're pulling our um, uncovered guys. It could be tight ends. It could be tackles, whatever it is. So it's basically stretched to the other side. Watch what we do. We hit a little hitch, getting our guy in space. Um, we're complementing that now route. Re remember, normally we run now route in pink. If we run it in pink, he blocks him. He blocks him. Well, in our stab play, this is our stab play. That's what we got. And I'm gonna, I'll teach you all the, the verbiage and how, I re, how you remember it and all that stuff. I don't want to give you all, everything in one day, but that's what we look at. <clears throat> we have these, these storylines on how the kids remember it. <clears throat> this tight end right here. Okay, I call him Wawa. He's always freaking open 24-7. In his head, he's open. You know, he's always open. He loves the pops. We're playing against a 3-3 stack team. The free safety's in the middle of the field right in the hash right here. He knows I'm getting higher than him, and I'm drifting vertical for the football. All right? We called the play. He yelled out, I'm open. Like, what? Like, like so here we are. We're running one back power with the tight end, with the pop, you're going to see quick throw, bang. That's all you want. Free safety is in the middle of the field because he's playing to the field, not to our formation. And tight end is wide open. They were blitzing the stack linebacker in a 3-3 a lot. And all you need is quick pop. There you go. That's it. That's all you're doing in the pops. That's where we steal a lot. All right, we got a big run in this play. Um, not this play. That was a sloppy play. We got a touchdown on that ball. Um, now, here's this. This kid starting at Holy Cross, um, just really good. If I had to make one coaching point with him, he should should not have took one more step when he passed this kid. This kid gets past this linebacker and jukes and gets in a hole. He's an athlete, the Division One kid. If he was 6'4", he would have been going to, like, Notre Dame. This kid's that good. He's better than his brother, and he went to Purdue. He was 6'2 and a half, and that's it. But this – now, you're going to watch bubble, fade, iso, and watch the reaction of the DBs on the perimeter. <laughs> watch the reaction. I'll rewind it. They're all getting – right? They're clearing out the picture. They're cropping that picture for the quarterback. 
<clears throat> quarterback's not looking at anything else. Everybody is – the box is his. So we're running the football. We're running taco to the left, which is our zone lock. <clears throat> and we're going Pepsi. Bang, quick hit throw. That's it. That's it. We utilize the middle of the field. We do not uh, – we throw in the middle of the field. We do with a purpose. Now, this quarterback never played football before a quarterback. He was a transfer in a triple option. This is his first game. Now, we're running Y Pepsi. He's the bubble. He's the fade. He runs ice. He's running an ISO. So he's running a fade because he's pressed. He's riding it this way, and then he throws it. You don't need to ride it. First of all, he's not looking at you, the DB. Um, so you just want to kick back and throw it. Well, he rode it and still kicked back and threw it, back shoulder it, and still scored a touchdown. But we got the kids, the ball, uh, the athletes. Just get it to him behind them. Um, but again, we don't overcoach it, but that's something I had to coach um, with him. Now, his eyes were bad. He didn't even look at it. Again, we are reading. We are an option football team, but we throw the ball. We don't, we don't want to pitch it and shovel all that shit like the true Army Navy guys. This guy we're reading right here, I'll just show you a couple more, and we'll talk more in another day. We're reading him. Okay? He's backing up. His body language says he's not stuffed in the run anyway. Look at him. Legs are stiff. He's playing wide. Starting in a box. It's muddy out. We're kicking the shit out of him. Um, this gets the ball. There we go. That's all we're doing. Coach, I got a quick one for you. Yeah. Um, you get a lot of. Uh, do you have any answers with man? Because all this stuff is 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 great stuff. But yeah, rubs. You know, lot rubs. Of rubs, coach. You're talking about like okay when you're running. You're, you're talking about when you're reading the inside linebacker. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm talking about basically where they're starting to take away your – they should uh, try to take away some RPO because they yeah. know that yeah. you're just reading people out. Coach, you the, up. the old rule is when you're a man, run speed option, but I don't run speed option. I don't do that. Right. Um, if they're in man, um, we do things with the running back. We'll swing them, and if they don't react with them, we'll throw it to them. If they react to the swing, we replace them with the quarterback. We call that paint. Like, a, you ever see that quarterback draw where if he swings and if that linebacker stays in a box, we throw it in a, in a, in a swing, a swing screen. Yeah. If he swings yeah. and he runs with them, we replace them. We do that. But we, yeah. your pops, you're right. If the quarterback is reading that guy and you're in man and that defender is going to be in his hip pocket. We rub him. We set picks. Right. We call it okay. Kobe. We do a pick and roll. A pick and roll. In other words, while the quarterback is doing that read, we're picking for the outside receiver, this guy. So what we would do is this and come underneath. So we, we got a little bit of space, so he threw it. Um, it's not great RPOs with man-to-man. -man. It's not. Well, that's why – that's why – that's not the question. You ask anybody, they say, speed option. Well, shit, I don't run speed option. But what we do, if a man, because you asked, you started this, coach. <laughs> it's this. I, I, I call it paint, all right? And I love doing it to we say, when I say paint, again, the term paint, so when I see paint, he's swinging. He's going to the outside. These guys are blocking. They're blocking. So it's a swing screen. So if we're playing against a team and we're reading this guy, all right, let's just say, I don't know. Uh, if you're going zero coverage, we're screwed with that. So like it's, We're going to have to do picks and not so many RPOs, but you're saying something, something, something like this, right? Um, meaning – uh, do I have two, four, six, eight? Okay. Now, if you're telling me the free safety, let's just say the free safety is covering it. All right. All right. He's there. But 
sometimes most teams like to play one free, right? Like right. you guys at Paulsboro. So yeah. what we would do is this. We would read this guy, all right, and we would run paint, paint. When I paint something, you're drawing. So the quarterback knows in his head that when I say paint, I'm drawing. So when I draw, I have to buy time. So I, my buy time is I'm going to take a couple, three quick steps here. Read this guy. If he stays put, we're throwing the swing. That, that's the answer to our, our, our man. So we're going to block, block like this, right? If he gets with, we're replacing him. And we're going to run a play. So we can run one back power. So we can go bang, bang, boom, boom, pull with him, pull, with him, sprint, with him sprinting, and we replace him. There's nobody there. It's me. So we play with the fucking linebackers, coach. All right? I went with you. Now, I think I took, coach, I told you on the phone or didn't, our kids don't know Mike Tyson. Our kids today don't know who the hell Mike Tyson is. They <laughs> only know Mike Tyson from that movie um, where he went to Las Vegas. What was that? Uh, the Hangover. Yeah. So, Coach, we use a buzzword for our HVAC, and we call it, I call it uh, Tyson. Well, you and all, we hear Tyson, we think Mike right away. They're like, what is that? I, that's when I knew I'm getting too old. Like, like these kids. So what I'm trying to say is I would make a call and there'd be years I would tell the tight end, you're on Tyson. You're blocking the mic. We swing the running back and we predetermine throw the football in teams that play man like that. These right. kids don't know who the hell Tyson is. I got to teach the whole shit. They know, uh, what's the guy? May Merriweather. What's his name? Uh, Mayweather. Yeah, Mayweather. they know him. They don't know Tyson. It's but again, we as coaches have to adjust to the kids with that right there. But I didn't budge with the Tyson thing. I, I really taught him who Tyson was. You know, they like I don't think he was better than that guy though. But all right, whatever. But <laughs> but but what we do, coach, you have to have something for if it's man, you have to set a pick. If it's a linebacker playing man, you we replace them. And it's I mean. Now, now here, since I got you, let's say you need you have a fullback and you want to run power. All right. And you were gonna run paint. So I love this formation. So they're in man, guys here, the guys here. We're playing Paulsboro. Um, so we're gonna run power. So there's a guy here. Um, let's just say it's a four four. You guys see a lot of four fours? Yeah, we see them. So two, four, six, seven, eight, down. nine, ten. Man free. And where this guy out here? Or something yeah. like that. Okay, okay. So so what right. we would coach, we would do this. If I want to run paint, okay, paint paint tells these guys are blocking, he's blocking, he's swinging. Because you paint outside, that's what we tell them. The quarterback is going to go one, two, three, quick steps. We're going to run power. So we're going to go Kong, Kong. Oh, oh, excuse me, paint, paint, Kong, yes. Quarterback knows paint means draw. I'm getting the football. You're swinging. So he's either getting the ball or he's running it. So we're going to run power. Bang, bang. He's going to sift through here. He's going to be in the hole. We're kicking out. All right. This guy doesn't run with him. All right, even though he might run with him, it's he doesn't run with him, boom, replace him. That's it. That's what we do. Right. That's what we do. We keep it simple, coach. All right. And not a lot of verbiage. We don't change nothing for the big guys up front. Um, I just it's I think it's easier to tag something with your skill kids than with your linemen. It's just easier. You run you also you run a lot of motion or no? no I, I I don't because I like to call what I say. If there's motion, I don't know how they're going to react. We run our jet sweep stuff off it and all that, but right. you don't know how they're going to react. Right. You don't. Right. Again, um, I remember when Brett Farr played for the Jets and, Sh and shot, was it Schottenheimer? 
uh, was the OC, and he looked back at him, he goes, stop fucking motioning. You're confusing the shit out of me. And here he is, Brett Farr, Hall of Famer with the Jets. He didn't want people moving around. He goes, I'm learning this offense. I need everybody stagnant. Leave them alone. Because when he went in motion, you can disguise things. And you don't, you don't know. Sometimes when you go in motion and the other team doesn't shift over like they should be, that could still confuse you, even though you outnumbered them to the one side. You well, know? That's, why, that's why we motion to get, to get numbers. You get yeah. numbers. You know, that, that's like in practice. You got your scout team, your shit, your motion, and they just stand there like a bunch of garbage bales. Right. It's like, yeah. it's like um, can, you, can you react a little bit, boys? So to me, we do motion, but we don't do it a lot. Gotcha. <clears throat> we, we do motion, but we do not do it a lot. So, so listen, so to Monday, I'm going to do a quick game. And, and, and then I'll do pumps off the quick game. So like double moves. And then Thursday, I'm going to do the pops and I'll do also the SPOs which is a screen, and I'm gonna show you that right now too, so you wanna know, which is a screen and a <coughs> screen and a pass built in one. Let me just show you a concept. They hurt, they hurt what? man to man too. Yeah. They hurt your man to man too, play man to man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanna show you this, coach. I, I, I've I been dabbling with it, and I kinda of like wanna play around with it before I do anything with it. I got more cut-ups with it, um, but, I don't have a lot of – I didn't have the balls to call it. Is that, does that sound right? Um, I don't like to waste plays. I, I don't like to waste plays. I get so upset if, if a play's wasted because you don't feel comfortable. I never run nothing if I didn't run it in practice. Here's, an, here, here's the um, – so if we were in black, it would be a black call. So if we're going to go to the left, lasers to the left, so we all know that laser screen, our tackles kick back, and our two guards and center are involved in the screen to the left. R- rockets to the right, and I hate to tell you, missiles in the middle. It's that simple. That's our screen game. We do a slip screen. We do uh, a missile screen. We do a rocket. <clears throat> Anybody can get the screens. Now, I want to mix in this. I want to mix in a screen to the left, a slip screen to the left, but I want to RPO, excuse me, SPO the linebacker to the back to the backside. So hear me out. So while the slip screen's going, I want the running back to start on the right. He's going to push two steps and then he's going to go flat on the slip screen to the left. Okay. Or we, we're going to run pop. So I'm going to go laser slip and then run Y pop. So we're going to be in black. So the quarterback knows that I'm going to read the backside linebacker to late laser, which is him, that guy right there. So the quarterback's going to take three quick steps because usually now when we pop it, we read it. Instead, he's dropping back because it's the, it's the screen pass. So he's going to push and find the hole, find the hole. He's a bubble. He's a fade. He's got his ISO. Again, if he wants to play, take a step and throw, step and throw, step and throw, while linemen are hitting 1,001, 1,002, get to their spot. So the quarterback's got to be fast with his read. So the quarterback's going one, two, three, not there. One, two, slip it. And that's what we want to do. So we want to play around with it. So over here, we're going to go slip to left. We go slip to the right with all this stuff going on. Receivers want the football, okay? And then we run it that way. Do I have a receiver? Okay. Then we run it with the receivers. We don't run it with a slip. My bad. We're going to run it with the stab play. So I'm married up. I'm going to show you all this stuff on Thursday. But I'll just show you one play. Oh, here's our fungu play. Our fungal plays, we have the fullback go away and we run the football or slip screen the other way. So we do things with the H-back right here with the fungo stuff. 
that I have some good clips. One play with this because it's we we're practicing with it. Uh, we have a drone. Um, that's me with the Hawaiian shirt. All right, so we're gonna run <coughs> rocket slip. Just I mean, imagine if they're moving fast. They're not, and these guys are playing defense, aren't moving fast. So on our rocket slip, these guys are kicking back for pass. We want the illusion that we're throwing the football. These three guys have to hit the closest defender, hit 1,001, and go. So he's got to hit him because he's close, hit him, hit him. They didn't do that, but you got to understand that's how they do it. And then they release wide, release wide, and release here. That's how we run it. While we're doing that, we split the field in half. We're reading this too. So imagine a receiver here or inside receiver. He's going to push this, that. That's how we're doing it. So while this is going on, one, two, three, pop. He's throwing it. Didn't get there. One, two, three. It's not there. One, two, throw it. Because it needs time to develop. Okay. And the reason why I have the running back on this side, I want this dude to run with them so we can pop it there. Does that, does that make sense? Coach? Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm with you. You know what I'm saying? Like now, now, now look, this dude's not running. He's, he, he's, he's like a garbage can right now. Like, like, please react. Of course you, I would be cursing right now. We're telling that kid, what, you know, you know, so here we go. And as you can see, we should hold our block a little quicker. I mean, a little longer. Um, but the illusion, bang, there. So while we're doing that, he should be reading this dude. He should be reading this dude. We let go of our guys too quick. If you can imagine, if we perfect it, that's what I'm trying to do. I got you. Know? You. Yeah, you know, I mean, let me see if I have one more. Okay, I do. Again, this is against our scout team. and um, Okay. Watch, yeah, yeah. Watch the pop. We're running laser slip to the left. We didn't do a great job. Look at it. The guy didn't even hit him. I'm like, yo, I'm going to call this guy up and bitch at him. All right. But look, he didn't even hit him. So, I mean, just imagine if we hit the guys. Okay. While we're doing this, our tight end is running his pop. He's running bubble. We want with, with, clear out, clear out. All right. And play with that. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, see how he drops that linebacker? We're throwing that. We're throwing a slip. I didn't hear you in the beginning. Did you put a pop on most things? What? I didn't hear you in the beginning. Do you put? Do you put a pop on most things? Yeah. Like the mm -hmm. pop. Uh, pops are our favorite one. We run, coach. If I wanted someone else, we can run a slant and him do that and read this guy and throw Got it. it. Through. Yeah, we Got change it. it up. We change it up. Uh, yeah. No pop. Pops not. No, no. We run. Well, we, we say like X pop, it's a slant. Gotcha. Yeah. gotcha. Pop to me stands for this. Pass opposite play. So when we say pop, it's it's a thing where the kids know it's a pass opposite play. And that's how we, we went with it. So right. everything I what I call has a stupid, um, you know, now, stupid little, right. yeah. I'm a special ed teacher and I teach it that way. <laughs> that, that's, you know, again, you got to dummy it down to the kids. But as you can see, look at the slip screen. There ain't nothing pretty when you run a slip screen and you got linemen down the field, right? So, um, you know, so th that's that. I know I'm rushing through it. I'll always, guys, if you guys ever wanted to talk um, at any time, you got my contact information. Um, or let me just give it to you. Let me give it to you. Or I'm on, I'm, I'm on Facebook. Um, if you need anything, here's my phone number. And if you do text me, text me where your, your name and where you're at. Um, so I can put it into my contact stuff. And then listen, I have every cut up of everything here. Um, I, 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 between you and I, I'm very good with a lot of the college coaches i have a lot of i have a lot of material if you ever need it from college coaches because our kids were being recruited they'll give me a bunch of their things if you need a lot of the 
the RPO stuff from Noel Mazzone. I got that stuff. Um, one of his, one of his guys was my coach. Um, who's, who was at IMG. He's now at Del Val, Bobby Acosta um, in Texas. He's there now. Um, so I got all that stuff. I love talking football all the time. You know, like I said, my wife and family are, we have a house on the Island. They're all there and all the girls and her friends and, I'm sitting here talking football, having probably more fun than them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's have some fun. I want to start doing this. Guys, the other thing is this. I'm the short conference president uh, down here, and I'm in charge of clinics. I run clinics for my association. I had Phil Longo on the other day from North Carolina. I don't know if you were there, Coach. I had Ed Foley um, from the Carolina Panthers. I had our a head coach from Kane University. We're going to have Chris Visor. Do you know who Chris Visor is? Uh, the podcast um, where he's got all these defensive coordinators on there all over the country. Um, he'll be on. Yeah. You know him? I don't know him. No. He'll be on the 25th. Let's stay connected so I can give you the link to that um, okay. when it happens. So I'll do that in like a week. Send it yeah. out. So is there any other questions? Will, Chris, Dre? No, I'll just save it for the next uh, phase. Yeah, of that, that's, I mean, good. Did I bore you? No, no, it, it just meant more towards your quick game. And whatnot. You got to so. understand, I, I, I know talking the pre, it's, 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 you need your basic stuff to move on to the next stuff. Pre-snap to me, when you're teaching your quarterback, I do a quarterback academy before I do football season. And why do I do that? Because how many times can a quarterback be injured? He's not at practice. He's sick. And you have to go to a backup quarterback, and then you have to coach him up on a run. Hey, remember, to re nobody coaches up the backup quarterback, the second, the third, the fourth, and it can demoralize the team if he doesn't know what he's doing. So we have a quarterback academy for two or three days, depending on what I feel it needs to be done, that no other position meets with me except the quarterbacks. And I invite 15 kids, and we call it fantasy, fantasy week for all of them. I don't give a shit. You want to play quarterback or get it? Everybody gets it out of their system. They shit it out of their system. Everybody could be their quarterback. One time I had 18 kids, and I taught them the, the, the basics with the language, um, the, the terms, the, the techniques, and they learned everything. And then after three days, I broke hearts. Go back to center, you go to guard, you go to tackle, hey. you go to tackle, you know? So, but, but, but what that did for me was two things. It, it allowed a kid to get a chance and they felt they, they really appreciate that. And second of all, that they understood, they understood that what I'm asking for, for a quarterback. So when I had to talk to them during the season, like at Wildcat, they knew the snap count. They knew the procedures of a quarterback, what to do. And that was important for me. For me, it was important to have that with the kids because they respected the position more too. Did that make sense? You know, so yeah. they, they respected it and, um, and it worked well that they learned the basics uh, of quarterback play, you know? So, but, but in this day and age, guys, nobody wants to play freaking line. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I don't want to play. You guys got the answer for that. Do a clinic on it. <laughs> Nobody wants to play. I've done so much. <clears throat> like, you know, we call them ATM. All that matters. I endorse them like crazy. If you go on my social media. Those linemen are celebrities, man. I mean, I start off and talk about my girls and say, they're only going to marry linemen because they're the most loyal guys out there in the program. That still didn't win them over. I'm like, God darn, I don't know what to say. They're like, I actually went as far as told the principal, make one of them the prom king, please. Like, it's like, the, people don't want to play line. I don't know what it is. Um, but everybody's got this thing, they want to wear number one. They want to wear number one. It's unbelievable. Number one. So if we could hit them to wear number one and play line, then we're going to be all right. 
but that's 71. We need 71. I don't know what it is with Lyman. I don't know what it is, but I had one kid was bitching about alignment, the line men, and you know, linemen are a unit. Go, you know, coach, they're not, they're, they're not, I don't, they're not blocking for shit. He goes, I don't give, they're not doing shit. I go, watch your choice of words. No, no, they're, they're terrible. I, it's, I don't even need them. You don't need them? Oh, we try. Next I, I, I told, I told the guard, get out. I told the one guard, get out. Right. And, you know, we're doing our inside drill. I said, okay, I want you to run power. He looks at me, the running back, he goes, who's going in for so-and-so? I go, no, you already said they suck. You don't need them. Run the play. He's like, what? We ran that play. He got smacked in the hole. I'll tell you right now, he ain't talking shit about linemen anymore. Because I told him, I said, I'll take the linemen out and run pitch. Right? I mean, sometimes those kids need a little little love like that. You know, they need to know that these linemen, you know, even though they whiffed, you still need them. Yeah, right. You, you still need them. So, um, yeah, funny story with that. So, all right, listen, again, coach, coaches, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes, sir. I had all my, yeah. this is all my plays that I've ever run that, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm like a, a hoarder with, with, with plays. And, I mean, I, if I ever deleted that, I would be like lost. Like seriously, I'd be upset. But I have everything. So the answer to is, what else do we run? I don't run a million things, but I, we do have diverse amount of plays of of stuff. I mean, we're we're um, we're a waggle team. We're very good screens where we block with the linemen downfield. Like I said, with that jet sweep, we do all that stuff. But we're we're known as an RPO, no huddle, high tempo. Um, or let me change that tempo offense. We try and knock the wind out of the defense alignment of the other team. That's what we try and do. We try and get to the third, fourth quarter and, and, and kind of like just. Are you one word, one word stuff? Like just say one word and that's. Uh, coach, if we want to go same play, we go Peter, Peter, Peter's stands for repeat. If I want to run to the other side, flip, flip. If I want to run run um, a, a phony call. We go candy, candy, which is hard right now. Say, huh, 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 huh. They look at me. I call the play. We move it and we go. <clears throat> we only go on one or candy. One or hard count. I don't like to go on two. I think our guys are going to jump over the shoulders of the guys and all that. But we don't, like, I keep it simple. You know? Um, yeah. What buzzwords, coach? I can't be wordy. I, I don't like to be wordy. We, we don't use numbers in our run game. Uh, if we want to go to the right, it's yes. If we want to go to the left, it's no. So right. I, go, I go yes or no. I yell, out, I yell out the schemes. I yell it out. They don't know. You're going that, that's, why I, that, that's what I was asking. Because, you know, I, I, we were talking about playing faster at Paul's Bar anyway. And, yeah. You know, I, uh, you know. You know, and Coach, when you say the word tempo, everybody – Thinks at first, like, oh my God, you're going to tire everybody out. You're, it's, to me, tempo is a rhythm of the play, so a rhythm of the of the of the uh, music. So, in other words, if you're at a dance and they're playing, um, you know, Michael Jackson, your hips are moving to the beat. If they play Barry Manilow or 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 um, you know, you know, all these different music that goes fast or slower, you somehow we adjust. You know what I'm saying? So why can't you do that with calling plays too? So we change our tempo uh, according to what I want. And what it does is it creates anxiety for the defense and they're getting more tired, even though they don't under, understand what we're doing. Because we know when we're snapping the ball and they don't. They don't because they're on pull. And what do the defense say? Get ready because they can snap it at any time. And we're chilling. They don't know what we're doing, the other team, and we wear them out. And the other thing is- you do any sugar huddle? You do what? any sugar you do any sugar huddle? That's what we do. No, I'm saying, do you never get in the huddle at all? Or do you? Uh, uh, no. no. No, okay. No, it's funny because when we call a timeout and you'll have like a younger coach, just get in the huddle. They don't even know what a huddle is. They right. Don't know huddle. Like, like, coach, when we play uh, scrimmages, we, we don't huddle in practice, but before a scrimmage, we huddle. So we'll tell guys, let's go into a huddle. 
We spend 10, 15 minutes on yeah. screaming yeah. at a huddle. I said, we're not even getting any better. I don't give a shit how you huddle. Look like shit. Because when the first team plays us, they're going to say, we're disorganized. We look like shit and they don't know the plays and we kick their ass. That's what we do. We don't huddle. Yeah. We don't huddle. We don't huddle. Yeah. To me, it's organized chaos. Like it's, just, it, it's just something you don't yell at your kids for. Most coaches will scream out, stop talking in the huddle. Stop doing it. It's usually the huddle has something to do with the, 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 it all starts in the huddle. We're acting like assholes. Well, let's not huddle. So there we go. Coach, my best football team was 10 and two and they couldn't huddle. They had a rule five yards, no, three, yard, three yards from everybody on the sidelines because they, everybody bothered each other. It, and it, it just like, do not go near each other. So we have fun with it. So, you guys need anything, guys? Let me know. You got my my uh, information from Facebook and all that. All right, let's do Thanks, this. Coach. Let's do this again Monday. Appreciate you, Coach. Thanks, right, guys. Thanks. All right, thank you. Hey, thanks a lot, Coach. Thanks, guys. Awesome.